Hello everyone and welcome back. Yes, this is a GS adventure and oh my god have I missed this bike. As far as I'm concerned, this is the best bike in the world. And I know everyone's going to go, oh my god, no, you want an R1 and you want this and you want that. You want that. And yeah, fair enough for like sports, like if you're going to go out at the weekend or do the old track day here and there, yeah, absolutely, this is probably not the bike you want. But for an actual motorcycle to do stuff on, to actually use, to live your life on, and take you places that you could never get to easily on other machines, this is the best. As you know, I had a 2014 bike for a couple of years. That was the first gen of the water-cooled machines. That was the military green sort of color one, which is still, in my opinion, the best color. This is a triple black. 2018 version, so it's got the sexual TFT display. It's, I don't know why I said sexual, there's nothing sexual about it. It's just uh, considerably better than the other one. And, oh God, this thing just... I feel at home. I feel like I can ride a bike again. I know that sounds stupid, but I've missed it so much. I've missed being able to just get on and, and almost enjoying adverse weather. But look, I'll just quickly stop here um, and give you a quick walk around. Ugh. Open the flaps. So this is, I literally picked it up yesterday. I was gonna do a video picking it up, but it got dark and late by the time I faffed around and got it. That's not a good sign, is it? I need to get the, the uh, straps off. <laughs> How does one remove such items? Um, so I was going to do a, a collection video and all that jazz, but I thought it was late and I was going out for a curry. I'm wearing the enemy's boots as well. Uh, okay, that's one out. Day one, instant faffery. Is that going to come? Where's that little fanny gone? There. <laughs> oh. Right, so here is a keyless ride issue. Is it an issue? You kind of get used to wherever the key is. You go, whatever, it's in my bag, I don't care. Then you need to go and unlock your pannier or your top box and you don't have it to hand. Anyway, back to the matter at hand. Let's remove my four-year-old gloves. I got these when I first went to the Isle of Man TT a long time ago. They're not waterproof anymore, but they're warm. And it is, according to my integrated dashboard, 11 degrees today. And yeah, this is her, triple black, brand spanker, um, GS, uh, hang on, let's get the name right, a BMW R1200 GS Adventure TE. And the TE is basically, it has extra stuff on it. So it has the pannier rails in included. The TE is fully loaded to a level, to a degree. Um, it doesn't come with the panniers and stuff, and it doesn't come with this Akropovic HP exhaust, which I need to take the baffles out of. Uh, those are extras. And it doesn't come with a dash, that's an extra, or the sat-nav, or this little new for 2018 SOS button, which I dare not press. Anything else new on this bike? It's got the uh, self-leveling suspension, which I don't know about self-leveling, but it is sublime. The ride is absolutely sublime. It's got different LED dick lights. I, my old one had that really cool nose guard, headlight guard, so I'm gonna try and get one of those. Uh, and yeah, that's enough walking around. Let's go and ride the bloody thing. Chinook, Odeon boys, should we wave? Hey. That is one of the coolest helicopters you'll ever see, isn't it? That's something out of Halo. Ugh. God, I've got to get used to the weight. It is a it is a big old thing to get off the sand. Stand. And probably sand. Right, I wonder if it's going to do the snazzy intro yet. GS. This is the new Navigator 6, by the way. Um, interestingly, 
and kind of annoyingly, they've gone for a gloss screen, which is really odd because anyone that's ever taken any electrical device with a screen outside will realise that they're not very good and they're high gloss. So I am confused as to why they've done that. Maybe so they can sell the extra add-on sunshade. Uh, at a standstill, what else have we got? We've got... In fact, let's just go. That dash is nice, when not it? The numbers go up. And the old bike, that was one of the main issues I had with it. Hey! Look at that. See, that's how popular they are. The old bike had analog dash, and I don't mind an analog dash. Great. But the problem with the analog one was the speedo was so small, you ended up just putting the speed up here and just looking at the sat-nav continually. Whereas this is actually, an, uh, obviously, a very easy to read thing. Another update for 2018 is the black buttons on the switch gear. Another nice touch because the old ones were grey. No matter how many times you clean them, they would always have that grubby feel to them. So it did date the bike considerably. Obviously this has got cruise control, electronic suspension. Well, not obviously it's got electronic suspension. It has. But that dash is so much easier to read and it just updates the whole bike into something worthy of 2018. Still got the adjustable screen, exactly the same as the old ones. Oh, I put my little Turatec flappy bag on here. Very handy little pouch for your phone and your wallet. And then again, when you buy the adapter for the 12 volt socket, is it 12 volt? Whatever, volt socket you can then charge your phone directly. Why they don't just have a normal size? The KTM has a normal sized socket for that. Instead, now you've got to buy a 15, 20 quid adapter from BMW. Little things like that are very annoying when you consider the price of this bike is a lot. I don't actually know exactly how much this is sitting at, and that may sound very arrogant and affluent and ostentatious, but technically, even though this is my bike, it's actually the long-term bike for 2018 for 44 teeth. So this is going to be our camera bike and it's going to go on all of our adventures and travels because, again, I, I believe this is the best bike to get you places, to, to do a job on, which is why we proposed it to be our third man, basically. It's got the great... Um, metal panniers and top box that you can stick GoPros and stuff on or drifts, whatever your preference is, or even Sony. Uh, what else have we got on here? We've got tyre pressure monitor, connectivity. So I've connected my phone just literally before I left a minute ago and you don't have to buy this sat-nav unit now. You can actually get, hopefully when I can get to, I'm going to go to the office now and get a Wi-Fi connection to because you have to download a 12 gigabyte map for Europe so I'll download that not over my digital whatever you call it connection but apparently when you're set it will give you like a it won't give you a map on this TFT which is maybe a bit of a missed trick but anyway but it will give you um, first left or second exit on the roundabout stuff like that which is kind of all you really need but it is nice to be able to, to look at the map and see exactly where one is in one's world. One's, one's ever decreasing world in size with a bike like this because you really do feel like you can just fuck off and go anywhere you want. And it doesn't matter if it rains, doesn't matter if it snows. It just basically doesn't matter. And that is why I love this thing so, so, so much. I honestly feel like a part of me has been missing since I sold my bike. And I look at it this year and I think, actually, apart from doing tests with 44 teeth and stuff like that, like proper things, how I think I've actually only ridden 800 miles this year. Isn't that disgusting? 800 miles, that is disgusting, on six bikes. And I think it's because they all, other bikes have an element of stress attached to them. Whereas this, doesn't matter what you're wearing, doesn't matter what the weather's going to be like. It doesn't matter um, 
if you're going to go somewhere with no fuel stations it, it just makes everything so easy if you're going to take a backpack with you i've got a nice let's take the r100 for example i don't want to scratch the back of the tail you know the hp4 as fantastic as that is honestly it's probably one of the second best bikes in the world again it's just a little bit sunday it's a little bit it's it's not really a commuting weapon although it is probably one of the best super bikes to commute on if you were considering such a thing and like roads and lanes like this are just they become a joy and exciting and easy and fun on a bike like this and i know most of you don't live down roads like this i get that but it just gives you that freedom to make the choice of, of going off to explore and you can do all of that with your Spider-Man lunchbox in the top box. Stop off, have a little nibble, a little pork pie, a little chocolate finger, pheasant, or whatever takes your fancy of the picnic culinary persuasion. Um, right, so this little SOS button, this again, you've got to pay to save your life. Um, I think this is about a 250 quid option where, and I'm not entirely sure of the ins and outs, but basically it's a, holy shit, I've, I'm in a ditch somewhere in the middle of nowhere, please someone come and help me. And it also, if you've been knocked out or unconscious, it will sense the bike has dropped and require, if you don't do anything with it for a couple of minutes, it will then automatically ring up someone and uh, say that you've been a bell end. And I, it is fast enough, this thing, it really is. I mean, you don't, you just do not need to go any quicker. You don't want to go any quicker. It's perfect gearing. Oh, talk about gearing. Excuse me, by the way, if I'm just spaffing all over this bike, but I've, I'm so excited, so excited by it. But that, this gearbox, again, I had the water-cooled 2014 first gen with the quick, no, what's it called? Shift Assist Pro. So that is an up and down quick shifting gearbox. And it was great, it, well, it was good, but this is like butter now. They have done something to this and it is just slick as you like. I mean, you can, you can barely even hear it or feel, the, feel it going down. It is just absolutely bob on. Uh, of course, LED headlights from the last model, nothing's changed there, apart from the side ones, they're a bit better. I, I, you know, I struggle to fault this bike, I absolutely struggle to fault it. Brakes are good enough, as we just found out. All the shit on the road, you know, again, if you're on a super bike, you're like, ah, you get all tense and you get all stressed. This just seems to take it, it seems to love it and it spits it back and snowballs you in the mouth. It's just, did you hear that? The way it just re-engages that clutch after the shift in just such a buttery, silky, smooth way. I like the base, base, biscuit base, buttery biscuit base. <laughs> Do you remember that? Uh, that is what the internet was made for. So what else is there to talk about? Still got the little flappy here for your little credit cards on a toll road. Still got the massive 30 litre tank, which you will want to stop before the bike wants to stop. I can tell thee that. I mean, it's just so good, so good. The extra protection this offers you, this, I'm getting no wind chill on my legs none of that stuff it is just absolutely oh god i'm sorry I, I know i know i know a lot of you just like oh god what a big shitty bus and i and up until a few years ago i'd have completely agreed with you and wouldn't have been seen dead on one but then i realized you just got to ride one and go do you know what that is a very good tool and that's what it is a tool <laughs> so are a lot of the owners but Fifth gear acceleration, no problem at all, overtake complete. Oh god, and you can stand up on a long journey, stretch your legs, look over hedges, look into young ladies' bedrooms. But yeah, so up to a couple of years ago, I would have completely agreed that I wouldn't have been seen dead on one of these. But you've just got to ride one. And don't just take it out for 
an, like a, a, an hour or two on a Sunday for a Sunday blast. Like, do something on it. Complete a mission. And then you will see just how good it is to have your life made easy. Now, I'm not all about just because something's easy, you should get it. Because there is reward in completing hard tasks. But there is no real sacrifice in the ease of how capable this bike is. There is no sacrifice. It's as quick as whoever's riding it. And you put someone with, with talent and skills on this bike and you go out on a Sunday on, a, on the roads around the UK or Europe, wherever you live, they will, they will be with you unless you just sod off down a dual carriageway at stupid like 170, which rarely happens. <coughs> uh, and if it does, it shouldn't be happening because it's pretty bad. You're going to go to prison for that. So I, I can't see a fault. I guess the only fault I can see with it is subjective as to if you're like a small person then I can understand how this could be quite intimidating to pick up off the stand and you know move around the, the car park or whatever you're going to do with it I can understand how this could be a scary thing to get on but I don't care and do you know why because <laughs> The luck of the small people is that you can ride a superbike comfortably. You can ride all those titchy little things that everyone wants to ride, all the highly desirable things, and not have to go through as much pain as I do. So I'm, I'm, I don't give a shit if you're small. You know, oh, it's too small for me. Well, I'm sorry, mate, but that's the way the cookie crumbles. And um, fuck you, basically. So I don't really give a shit if, uh, if you're too small to ride it because I think you've got a plethora of other motorcycle options and leave this one for the big lads. I suppose filtering is a bit of a negative. It is quite a big old bus, but then I did it for a couple of years up into London and it was maybe overall average two minutes slower than a bike that could filter quickly. So sometimes, like now, I'm just not... Well, I'm not in a particular rush, so I don't really care, but... I'm not going to bother stressing out and trying to get to the front. All that jazz. What's the other negative? I suppose the other negative is the price. It is, it is a considerably uh, expensive motorcycle. But then, aren't they all these days? You know, they're all creeping up there. And this will last you for a long, long time. And they hold their values exceptionally well. I think I lost... I bought mine in 2014 for 16 grand. I put 20,000 miles on it, 21,000 miles, something like that. And I sold it for 13 grand, uh, two years later. So that's a loss of 3,000 quid for 20,000 miles. That's nothing. And it was a brand new bike. I mean, it is obviously 3,000 pounds before everyone gets all upset and fucking butt hurt. Obviously it is three grand and I much prefer to have it in my pocket, but I could have made a lot worse choices. Worser? Is that, is that even a word? Worser. So yeah. Is this a review? I don't even know. Basically, I'm in love again and I feel like me again. And I feel like I want to ride again. And that's been lacking from my life. For a year, if I'm honest. I haven't really enjoyed it. But now I feel like I, I could go to the Alps tomorrow. Or ride down to Spain get the right gear on you're sorted and that is why I love this bike thank you everyone for watching and for making it possible for me to be in a position to be able to borrow things like this for a long time and uh, yeah it means a lot cheers guys